Hello and welcome to another book talk with the Massanut Regional Library. I'm Ms. Stephanie, one of the librarians in the Youth Services Department, and I'd like to share some YA books on poetry this month because April is National Poetry Month, and what I found when I was looking for books for this talk, is poetry can come in so many different shapes and sizes, and some of the genre, subgenres in poetry that I chose were novel and verse, slam poetry, and gothic. And the first book that I'm going to talk about today, which is The Firefly Letters by Marguerite Angle, is a no novel in verse. And what a novel in verse is, it just means that the author develops the plot and the characters through different verses of poetry. Like instead of reading like paragraphs and dialogues, you'll get like different verses of poetry on each page. And the poetry doesn't necessarily rhyme, but it usually flows in a certain rhythm, which makes the words you know, full more smoothly than in a regular novel. And in this book, we have three female narr narrators who tell their different perspectives. And they, the first one is Frederica. This book is all set in Cuba. And she's a Swedish traveler who wants to just find a quiet home in the Cuban countryside. This is in the late 19th century. And rather than marrying, which is what women are expected to do during that time, she is more focused on writing about issues that are related to women and who are treated more like property than people. And she notices both in this, her home country of Sweden and in Cuba. The next character is Elena, and she is the daughter of the wealthy plantation owner who is hosting Frederica for the summer. And her family is very strict. Elena is barely able to even leave her room, much less the mansion, to go outside. And she is very discontent. She's a bit envious of Frederica, and, but she's inspired by her as well. And the final narrator, her name is Cecilia. She's only 15 years old, yet she was taken from her home at the age of eight as, to become a slave in Cuba, and she had to travel all the way from Africa, and her father forced her to be in slavery, and not only did she, of those horrors, she also was, is pregnant and married at the same time, and the title of this book comes from Rika's fascination with the fireflies around Elena's house. She, they, there are lights in the darkness, and she kind of draws the other two women into that fascination as well, and it, they develop a bond, and if you read this, you will find a bit more about what happens, because I would not like to spoil it for you guys. And it's, as you can see, it's a quick read. It's really nice. I like, I feel like the characters are pretty well developed for a short novel like this, and the poetry is very beautiful and elegant, and I'm just going to read one quick excerpt from it. And this is from the perspective of Frederica. Cuban fireflies are the most amazing little creatures I have ever seen. They flock to me at night, resting on my fingers, so that while I am sketching and writing letters, I need no other lantern, just the light from their movements. I skim my hand across the page while the brilliant fireflies help me decide what to write. There is so much to tell. How can I describe this shocking journey? I must speak of Cecilia's homesickness and her lung sickness, and the way her baby is doomed to be born into slavery. I must describe Elena's loneliness and her longing for a sense of purpose. Somehow I must show my readers the bright flowers and the glowing insects that make Cuban night feel like morning. And so that is the Firefly Letters. And we're going to do a pretty drastic shift with our next book. This is a graphic novel. It is a compilation of the short stories and poems by Edward Allan Poe, who is actually from Virginia. And what I like about this the most is the editor, Garth Hines, did a great job of bringing 19th century poetry to life for us readers here in the 21st century. But why, could, why should I tell you about this? Well, let me give you a closer look inside the pages to show you what he's done. Okay, so we have the graphic novel here, and I'm going to just start off by showing you that in the I like how he has like a checklist of like different themes that Edgar Allan Poe liked to use in his short stories and poems. And we got like creepy animals, darkness, murder, um, all sorts of really creepy things that are perfect for Gothic literature, which what Poe was really big into. And I'm just going to show you pictures of two of the poems. The first is the Annabelle Lee. And as you can see, like in this bottom right corner, we have angels and demons and death. It's like kind of like a spoiler, not a spoiler warning, but just kind of like in case you someone, you get triggered by that sort of thing. And then here we have a lovely, great illustrations, very striking. And the poems are in there. And then his most famous poem is 
The Raven, actually, it's one of my favorite poems as well. And then in the corner right here, we see that he has angels and demons, creepy animals, darkness and death. And I'll just read the first verse or stanza of this poem because it's actually one of my favorites. Once upon a midnight dreary, why pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore? While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. And then we go and we see a great illustration of the raven and just really great, like I said, it does a really good job. Heinz does a great job of bringing this graphic novel, this 19th century poetry to life for us here in the 21st century. So let's go on to our final book. All right, and for my final book today, I would like to share The Poet X, which is written by Elizabeth Acevedo. And this won a National Book Award. And this book is about a 15-year-old teenager named Zia Mara. And she lives in Harlem with her family, who is Im her immigrants from the Dominican Republic. And Zia Mara is feels really stifled in her life. She doesn't... She feels like caged in, like her life is defined for her, rather she can't make any choices. And although she's close to her best friend and twin brother, she still feels like her parents, especially her mother, are very stifled. And they force her things to go to confirmation classes at her church when she's not sure what she feels about God or anything else. And it's just she can't share that she has a secret crush on a boy in her biology class because she's afraid of what her mother will say. And so Zia Amaro, she pours out all her frustrations, her passions, her dreams into a leather notebook, which is the book is set in novel and verse. And we get little excerpts or the poems that she used to kind of vent about the frustration she's feeling about her school and family situation. And eventually at school, her English teacher is recognizing her talent and invites her to join a school poetry club, which unfortunately it clashes with her confirmation classes at the parish. So Ziamara just has to choose about what to do. And we'll find out what happens when her secrets catch up to her. And she has to choose about towing the line in the past, like she's done in the past, or being true to herself in the present. And this is a very bold, it's raw, it's a little harsh and graphic, but I just think, I like it how Ziamara never minces words about how she feels. She's pouring out her soul and it's just a really, really great read. I couldn't put it down because it was just, I just kind of wanted to see how the situation developed, the story through her perspective. And it's about 350 pages long, but it goes by really quickly because on each page there's just a short stanza. And I actually am going to read you a quick expert, excerpt from this book. And it's actually how Zia Mara is describing her crush and she compares it to different types of poetry, which I thought would be perfect for this video. So let me start really quick. And this is, and this is, the name of her crush's name is Amon. I wanted to tell her that if Amon were a poem, he'd be written slumped across the page, sharp lines, and a witty punchline, written on a bodega brown paper bag. His hands, writing gently on our lab reports, turned into imagery. His smile, the sweetest uncliched simile. He is not elegant enough for a sonnet, too well thought out for a free ride, and taking too much space in my thoughts to ever be a haiku. And for those of you, a haiku is a very short poem, and I just like how she's using that as an analogy about how much she feels for him and her thoughts and passions, and he is an, also another character who encourages her in her dream. And the poet X is actually her nickname throughout the book, so another highly recommended read for this month. And thank you so much for joining me. I'll have a list of these books at the end and to put a hold on them if you like. And I hope you find one or two that you would enjoy. And I look forward to sharing more books with you next month. Have a good day. Bye.